Well, the academia sure is busy during the day. Hmm. But where should we go looking for people that we know? Traveler, Paimon. Sino! It's been so long since we last saw you! As do you. You don't seem wary at all from your travels. If anything, you seem stronger. So, what brings you back here? Oh, nothing in particular. Paimon just... saw a really big mushroom out on the road the other day and suddenly missed all our friends in Smeru. Funnily enough, we were reminiscing about you recently, too. It was at a group dinner. I look forward to hearing about your travels. Something tells me we must have a lot to catch up on. Really? You were thinking of us, too? What a coincidence! Indeed. Or as I call it, the beer yanni factor. You really want me to say the rest? <laughs> okay. It's always rice to meet Stu again. Oh, darn, he said it. Hmm, you like that one, huh? You must if you remember it after all this time. Admit the truth. You have long been in awe of my razor-sharp wit. You're exaggerating. It's only 500 mora. Hey! 500 mora is still a lot of snacks to pine on! <laughs> All right. I'll treat you to some desserts later. Anyway, I'm actually investigating a case right now. My mind is focused on work, which is why I didn't complete the joke at first. A case? What happened? Nothing major. But after finding out who was involved, I decided, on reflection, to handle this one myself. Need any help? We only came here to hang out, so we've got the time. You may as well take us with you, and then when you're done, we can, uh, you know... Such enthusiasm. <laughs> Are you worried I'll forget about treating you to some sweets if you're not around to remind me? Obvious enough. Still, it's a fine idea. You are the heroes of Sumeru. It makes perfect sense to work together. All right, follow me. See him? The old man flailing around? Oh, is he the one you wanted to talk to about the case? Correct. His name is Cyrus, a former Spontamod sage. He taught both me and Lisa. Huh? Sino's teacher is in trouble? It's ridiculous. I'm just an old man who enjoys a spot of gardening, shopping, and wine. What sort of person targets an old retiree? <sighs> Professor, I've brought some friends. Ah, Sino. Now who do we have here? Hmm. Hold on, let me think. A flying fairy dressed in white? A youth who does not seem to hail from this land? My goodness. You must be the legendary Traveler and Paimon. I've heard all about what you've done for Sumeru. Wow! Looks like we're really famous! I've told him about you before. You are my friends, after all. That's right. 
Let me summarize the situation. A couple of days ago, Professor Cyrus suddenly received a threat letter. A threat letter? Exactly. Who sends a threat letter to an old man like me, for goodness sake? This is the letter in question. Cyrus, I have uncovered your secret. If you wish to prevent it from going public, leave 10 million mora at the back door of the cafe. Secondly, don't come looking for me. You'll never find me. But I will always be watching you and all of your secrets. Finally, if you dare to report this to the mantra, there will be consequences. Wow, they sure didn't mince their words. Clearly, this person must be desperate for Mora. Ten million Mora, what a joke. I'm just a single retiree with nothing to my name beyond the tomatoes in my garden. Where do people think I'm hiding ten million Mora, huh? In my tomatoes? There were no witnesses. So currently the letter is all we've got. So Traveler, Paimon, let's put our heads together. Paimon's ready too! Alright, take a look. Do you see anything suspicious? Very good. The paper has a rather rough texture. It's not the typical kind you see in most books. Another thing is, some of these strokes look kind of blurry. Could there be an issue with the ink? Possibly. And I bet the paper has something to do with it. Uh, most of the paper around here is much smoother than this, and the ink is absorbed quickly so it doesn't run. This paper, meanwhile, it's uh, very coarse-grained. Almost as if it's... Made from some sort of plant matter. It's certainly not the same paper as we use in the Academia. But the ink is nothing special. Just regular black ink that gets a blue tinge when applied to paper. Hmm, so do we think the culprit has a connection with the Academia or not? Wait, check this out! Looks like this part got wet at some point! Huh, agreed. The staining suggests it was a colored liquid, not plain water. It also looks like it was wiped off with a damp cloth. A colored liquid, so... Tea? Wine? Looks like we're thinking along similar lines. Let's go talk to Arof. There are some things I'll need him to take care of. Mahamatra Sino, Sir Cyrus, ah, and the Traveler and Paimon. It's been a while. As such, I'm inclined to believe that the culprit in this case is a student at the Academia. Somebody young and strapped for cash. Oh, one last thing. I'd start your investigation by taking a look at the cafes in the city. Culprit spilled their coffee on the ladder, huh? They do look like coffee stains to me. Also, if I'm not mistaken, the letter is written on a type of scented paper that has aromatics added during the manufacturing process. The kind often provided as writing material for customers in cafes and taverns. 
Ah, uh, of course. Yes, like they sell in the gift shops. I remember now. Zaha Hadi bought some a while back. She said she was going to use it as wrapping paper for a vase. Understood. I'll assemble a team to investigate the points of interest immediately. You have my gratitude. One last thing. Send some matra to guard the entrances and exits of Sumeru City. And change into plain clothes. Don't let them see you coming. Will do. Great thinking, Sino. So, where do we think the culprit's at right now? Yeah, they've probably been lying low at home waiting to see how Cyrus reacts. Hmm. You're right, Paimon. Really? <gasps> Which part? The culprit's approach. Whatever happens, they need this Mora. But just because they warned Professor Cyrus not to go to the Matra, doesn't mean they know what he'll do next. So, like you said, they need to wait and see. And crucially, the culprit said they'd be watching the professor's every move. Huh? Wait, are you saying... Found you! <gasps> what are you doing? You wrote the threat letter. I... I don't know what you're talking about. What threat letter? I sensed someone was watching us from the shadows the moment we entered the house of Dana. You managed to stay relatively well hidden for someone reckless enough to threaten Professor Cyrus. There are a lot of people here, but we were looking specifically for Arov. Whoever followed us the whole way was likely to be the culprit. I... I was just listening in, that's all. You know something big's going down when Mahamatra Sino shows up, right? So I got a little curious. What's the big deal? You smiled when Arav left. I saw it as clear as day. Is smiling a crime now? There are coffee stains on the letter. You mixed some coffee with water, gently smeared it onto the paper, then wiped it off with a wet cloth. All to create the impression that the letter was written at a cafe. Closing off the exits to the city doesn't affect you, because you already live here. And as long as the Matra were focused on the cafes, you would be free from scrutiny. The cafe was a red herring all along. You had to be somewhere where you could monitor the professor's movements. You can't pin this on me! I haven't done anything! Really? Then why are you shaking like a leaf? The innocent have no reason to fear the Matra. But you... Your heart's racing, and your eyelids are twitching. You're a terrible liar. I, I would never... Don't try anything or you'll pay the price. Now come with me. Over quickly, Sino already caught the guy! You're telling me. One minute I go out for a quick smoke, the next minute I see Arav already on his way back to meet up with Sino. Ah, looked like a young guy, too. Couldn't have been much more than 30. But after what he's done, I'm afraid he's ruined his whole future. Everyone, it's all over. Gosh, that was so the culprit's name is Raka, a 16-year-old student in the Rataoist Darshan. Huh? 16? Cyrus thought he looked 30-something! We checked his records. He's 16, a third-year student. But he looks so old. Yeah, seriously! Ah, uh, foolish child. He's too young for the criminal life. What the devil drove him down this path? We question the culprit regarding his motives. He... um... Oh, just spit it out. 
Nothing can surprise me at this point. Very well. It's our understanding that Araka is a mediocre student who has been underperforming in his classes. He started taking extra tutoring to improve his grades, but developed a gambling habit around the same time and lost a lot of mora. Down on his luck, he went to the tavern for a drink and overheard some people chatting about Sir Cyrus's comfortable retirement. They mentioned that he's always arguing about his tomato plants with some old woman on the street. Some old woman on the street? Goodness gracious, has that rascal attended a single one of his classes? That old woman is Kisharwar's very own professor, Zaha Hadi. How can he not know who Zaha Hadi is? Is this going somewhere? Oh, right, yes. Uh, so another thing. We don't just argue about tomato plants. And what are they trying to insinuate by comfortable retirement? A man grows a few vegetables and suddenly he's living a life of luxury? Maybe it's more the fact that you have the time to grow vegetables in the first place. Araka mentioned he'd heard a rumor, alleging that Sir Cyrus illegally obtained a large sum of money from the desert before retiring and kept it for himself instead of reporting it to the academia. Araka believes this money to be the reason why Sir Cyrus hasn't kept up with any academic research or other projects since his retirement. And given your advanced age, he thought you'd be an easy target to blackmail. Oh, Araka. I'm at a loss for words. I'm so angry I don't know where to start. People make up rumors all the time. I am quite confident that Professor Cyrus has never embezzled a mora in his life. Arav, you'll have to find some excuse to interrogate Araka again later. I need you to deliver a few firm fistfuls to him on my behalf. I completely understand how you feel, Sir Cyrus, but I'm afraid that course of action goes against the Matra's principles. <sighs> Professor, there's no need to be childish about this. Oh, come on, I was clearly joking. Uh, okay. Where does this go from here? The Academia will determine the appropriate disciplinary action against the student. And as for the individuals spreading rumors about the professor's obsession with tomatoes and some old woman on the street, there could be a slander case here. The Matra will continue to investigate. Who said I'm obsessed with some old woman on the street? Mind your wording or you'll start a whole new rumor. You seem confused. <laughs> Don't you understand? Uraka is just a young boy who made a very rash and very stupid decision based on some groundless rumor he heard. Besides, I didn't actually hand over any mora to him. The whole thing sounds a lot worse than it is. All it costs me is a little reputational damage. That's all. Please rest assured, Professor, that the Academia will issue a fair and reasonable punishment. Yes, I have no doubt about that. But as a former educator, I'd still like to have a serious conversation with the boy's parents. The family lives in the city, yes? Correct. We looked into the family. Both parents are merchants, and they're often away on business. They've never taken much of an active role in their children's lives. Oh, what a mess. You don't have to seal the evidence away yet, do you? I'd like to have that letter back for the time being, if possible. I need something concrete for when I talk to the family tonight. We have to show them how serious this situation is. The relevant authorities have already reviewed the evidence and are now discussing Araka's punishment. You can hold on to the letter for now. Just make sure to return it within a couple of days. Oh, so you'll be able to close the case in two days. Give or take, cases like this are quick to resolve. Very good. Well, thank you for all your help. Perhaps we can all go for a meal together. Oh, my treat, of course. My apologies, Sir Cyrus, but I have a prior commitment. Enjoy the meal, everyone. Ah, I see. Well, that's a pity. But, Sino, you have to come. You found the culprit at record speed, and I owe you for that. Ah, and isn't Tainari in town at the moment? Bring him along, too. Wait, you mean Tainari's in the city? He is. 
Tainari's master, Sir Nephis, called him and Kale to the academia to help out on a project. They should be at Nephis' office at this hour. Though I must say, I'm surprised you're extending an invitation to Tainari. Did you do something to offend Sir Nephis? Don't be outrageous. Nephis offends me all the time. It's never the other way around. Anyway, hurry up and fetch Tainari. I'll head over to the tavern with the Traveler and Paimon. See you there. Uh, go on now. Don't keep us waiting. Not to brag, but we never had problems like this at Ratawa Hiss back when I was still teaching. And if you don't want to take my word for it, you can ask them. They were students at the time. They'll tell you what it was like, won't they? I was out in the forest at least four days a week back then, thanks to a colossal workload from Master. It wrought havoc on my poor tail, so I didn't exactly keep up to date with what was going on at the Academia. Most of what I know, I heard from Sino after the fact. Professor's become a lot more laid back in his retirement. He used to be far stricter, and was especially known for being extremely principled. Wow. It's hard enough to stay true to your principles as a normal person. I can't imagine doing that as a sage. It's a pity Kale wasn't around at the time. I would have happily taken her on as a student. And then we'd have one more person who has to address Lisa as upper-class woman. Really? Can't you just call her Lisa? She seems to prefer it when people treat her like an older sister. Oh, believe me. Back when she was a student, nothing made her happier than the younger students acknowledging her seniority. Whoa, more food? Are you sure about this? We don't want to take advantage. Oh, don't worry about it. Order whatever you like. And if it's not enough, order some more. <laughs> After all your help today, treating you to dinner is the least I can do. I thought I heard some familiar voices. Ah, and Sir Cyrus is here as well. Oh, Kave, it's been a while. Zahahadi was talking about you last month. How have you been? I've been all right, thank you. You're looking very well, sir. I'm glad to see it. Have you eaten yet? Uh, care to join us? That's awfully kind of you, but I had a late lunch, so I'm not really hungry just yet. I'll have dinner a little bit later tonight. I just came to Lombard's to buy some wine, and when I heard some voices I recognized, I thought I'd come and say hello. So what's the occasion, anyway? Some sort of celebration? Uh, consolation, more like. You wouldn't believe the day I've had. Sounds like things have really gone downhill since I was there. Uh, my whole time as a student, I've never heard of anything remotely like that. I can't believe how young the guy is. Oh, what are his parents going to think? Uh, young people are always more susceptible to making rash and ill-advised decisions. Their minds are still developing. It's just an unfortunate fact of life. But still, this boy has some nerve. Just look at what he wrote. Oh, it makes my blood boil. Wow, yeah. Jeez. I will always be watching you and all of your secrets. And... Then he just followed you into the house of Dana? If this were my son, oh, he'd get the scolding of a lifetime. Oh. Luckily, I'm also an extremely principled person. Kave! Your order's ready, sir! Uh, coming. I'll have to get going. Have a nice evening, everyone. I'll catch you all another time. Okay, bye! Here I am. The coffee beans are in here, too. 
Yep, it's all there. I'll stop babbling away now. Let's eat before the food gets cold. Too. I'll have to walk home to burn some of it off. Thanks for dinner, Sir Cyrus. Master Tainari and I will bring you some homemade herbal tea next time. It'll do wonders for your sleep. Well, I look forward to that. In fact, uh, could I trouble you to bring a little extra for the other old folks on my street? I'll be the envy of the neighborhood. <laughs> no problem at all. I'll pack some up and bring it over. Ah, I'll see you all later. I better head home now and tend to the crops. Good night, Professor. Don't let those tomatoes keep you up too late. Hey, my tomatoes are serious business. I am not about to be beaten by Zaha Hadi. Anyway, I'll be leaving now. Don't stay up too late now, children. I bid you all a good night. Take care! Have a safe trip home! <sighs> All right. Now, we finally have some us time. What do you mean, us time? Well, I was talking with Tainari and Kale, and since we all have some free time, we thought we could all go camping together. Think of it as our way of welcoming you back to Sumeru. Camping? Oh, that sounds fun! Paimon's in! Right? It's been so long since we did something fun together. I can't wait. Everyone, let's meet tomorrow afternoon at the riverbank to the southeast of Gandarvaville. No need to bring anything. We've already packed everything for the trip. Just bring your delightful selves and prepare to have some fun. You got it! We'll be there! Great. Then we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you for completing today's commissions. Here is your reward. I'd say we're right about on schedule, actually. We were aiming to have them set up before you arrived. Traveler, Paimon, let's go fishing together. Whatever we catch, we can grill for dinner tonight. You got it! Dinner's on us tonight! <laughs> I hope I can contribute, too. The other Forest Watchers gave me some fishing tips a little while ago. I'm really looking forward to giving them a try. Ah, 
I saw some very appetizing mushrooms in the area, so I gathered a few for us. I'll leave them here along with some fresh fruit. Wow, camping with a forest watcher is the way to go! They think of everything! And even if they don't, they can improvise! This is true. I don't think I've ever had a single rough day in this forest. So, how has everything been going for you? points, but we've had some unforgettable experiences along the way. I see. Oh, in that case, you should try a Valberry. I bought some from the market this morning. A valuable suggestion. Just don't bury your feelings using food. Uh, all I wanted was to recommend something bittersweet. Oh, I have a sudden craving for fruit tea. I'm gonna go fetch some stuff. Bye! She sure made a run for it. Unbelievable! She made a run for it! Hmm. So Kale chose the path of tactical retreat. Could it be she foresaw what shall soon come to pass? My dear friend, you know what I am about to say. <laughs> Excellent! A kindred spirit! A great warrior can sense when a duel is nigh! B but it looks like we'll get told off if we start playing now. Let's enjoy the nature for a while longer. I'll reel it in. Firewood, spices, snacks, and drinks. Everything's ready. Once Kale gets back, we can light up the fire and start grilling. There are three tents. Which one do you two want to take? Hmm... How about the one on the left? Well, Paimon just thinks the ambiance here is a little better. Hmm, true. But it's also the closest to the water. If there are any sleepwalking fungi around tonight, they might stumble into your tent. Hmm, well that's no good. <laughs> take my weapon. You can use it to bar the entrance. Anyone would think you were sealing the gates to King Deshret's mausoleum. Excellent. Then this tent will be an impenetrable fortress. I'm back! How's your appetites? Ready for the barbecue? Always. Oh, it smells so good. Paimon's drooling. Someone sure is desperate to eat. Hmm. I think it's time to add the seasoning. How do you like your skewers? Well done? Medium? Rare? Wait, what? Isn't that just for steaks? Hey, if it works for steak, maybe it works for other things too. Medium well for me. Okay, these are about ready now then. It'll be a few more minutes for anyone who wants theirs well done. Oh, that was so delicious. 
If Paimon's stomach had space, she'd eat three more skewers. I ate a lot too. <sighs> Here comes the food coma. If you're tired, then go rest. You must be getting sleepy too, Paimon. Why don't you guys head to your tents? Sino and I will clean up. Tonight I show you mercy. Our sacred duel will take place another day. <sighs> Good night. <sighs> Paimon's struggling to keep her eyes open. Oh, don't forget this. The Staff of the Scarlet Sands. Wait, you were actually being serious about that? It's a very powerful weapon. Try it. Paimon can't even lift that thing. Fair enough. You sure you don't want it? Yeah, Paimon sure. We'll be fine. And even if we do get an uninvited guest in the night, Paimon will be here to take care of the Traveler. That reminds me of a parting king of invocations. I, oh, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. But right now, it's time to rest. Sleep well and sweet dreams. I think they should all be here. Uh, Traveler? Paimon? Are you in there? Could you come outside for a sec? Look at this. What the? What's this sword doing here? Is it supposed to keep out intruders? Evidently. Uh, what? Who is it? Oh, what time do you call this? Paimon's gonna take out the sword! Yeah! I'll hate them! Kave! What are you doing here? It's the middle of the night! Sorry to wake you up at this hour of the night, but we've got a situation on our hands. Let's get dressed and talk about it outside. Something has come up, and since it pertains to Cyrus and Sino, I deemed it essential to inform you all. Whoa, whoa, back up. Uh, let's start from the beginning. Where'd the wine cups go? I could have sworn I left them here after I washed them. Ah, there they are. I'll have a cup too. Can you see if the cookies are still on the table? They are, and so are the fruits. Hmm. Oh, this is so bland. I should have gotten a few bottles of what Sino's group was drinking last night. Do tell. What were they drinking? Oh, right, I forgot to mention. So, I ran into Cyrus yesterday evening when I went to the tavern to pick up some things. He was hosting a dinner for Sino, Tainari, Kale, and the Traveler and Paimon. Anyway, they got a bottle of Lombard's new vintage for the table. At least, I think that's what it was. It looked pretty good. Hmm. Sounds like they're all tangled up in this. You know what it's about, right? Sixteen-year-old kid, tried to extort Cyrus, 
He was asking for 10 million mora. I heard some people talking about it on the streets, yes. Didn't take them long to catch the culprit. The sages are probably dealing with the case by now. <sighs> I wonder what Sir Nephis and the others will make of it. Oh, Cyrus showed me the extortion letter, too. It was crudely written, but the paper had this beautiful pattern on it that I've never seen before. It really caught my eye. Uh, give me a sec, I'll sketch it out for you. Okay, done. Take a look. You see what I mean? I don't think I've ever seen writing paper like this around before. God knows where the culprit got it from. Hmm. Interesting. These are all motifs associated with the tribes of the desert. What? Really? Take this, for instance. Looks like an outline of a spire, similar to the kind found on some ancient palaces. And the crisscrossing and mirroring here. I recognize that too. It bears a striking resemblance to an ancient emblem. One that hasn't been used in a very long time. Whose emblem is it? It's the emblem of the Temple of Silence. After discussing it with each other, we both agreed that something didn't feel right, so we went looking for you. This was a long way to come from the city. Alhatham figured you were probably with Tainari, so Gandarvaville was our first stop, but the Forest Watchers told us that you'd gone camping. Then, just as we were heading off to the campsite, we ran into Sino. He said he was on a supply run. We exchanged a few words, and then he ran off. Is everything okay? Give me a second. L let me get Kale. So you've never heard of the Temple of Silence? Hmm. <laughs> well, to put it simply, it's an organization that has existed in Sumer for over a thousand years. These days, you can find a Temple of Silence office in the Academia, Theoretically, it's responsible for the custody and disposal of information and documents not fit for public dissemination. At least, that's what they tell the outside world. In truth, it's essentially a vestigial institution nowadays. There's an office with their name on it, but it's functionally obsolete. Historically speaking, the original Temple of Silence is said to have been established by Hermanubis, one of the seven pillars of King Deshret and the greatest of all sages. Most of the organization's members hailed from the desert. By contrast, none of the Academia Temple's current members are from the desert region, nor do they use any symbols connected with the desert folk. So the Temple of Silence at the Academia is just a fake? Wow. It's possible. The real question is, why? My guess is they're covering something up. So how do you know all this? Sounds like some pretty top-secret stuff! Did you forget? He did a stint as acting Grand Sage, and kept the pay raise even after he resigned. Oh, yeah! Paimon did totally forget about that. So you took the chance to read all the top-secret documents while you were acting Grand Sage, huh? If you're asking me whether I familiarized myself with the documentation in my office, I would respond that that's a perfectly normal part of any job. So much about this doesn't make sense. Why did the emblem of the Temple of Silence appear on a threat letter from an Academia student to Cyrus? The student's only 16, and doesn't have any family ties to the desert. So where could he have seen that emblem, or gotten the paper? You said you ran into Sino, yes? Did you tell him what you've just told us? Yep. He ran off as soon as he heard what we said. Given that Cyrus is involved, 
he's probably halfway through solving the case by now. Hmm. Still, we should try to catch up with him. At this hour of the night, Sino will probably go looking for Cyrus at his current residence. Hmm. If the Academia's Temple of Silence really does exist just to cover up the truth, the sudden appearance of this emblem can't be good, and sure to stir up trouble. We should pay a visit to the Academia. Yes. As the Sage of Amorta, my master ought to know the truth about their office. You can ask him to tell you what he knows. The more information we have, the better prepared we'll be for whatever happens there. If this situation is connected to the real Temple of Silence, the emblem has to be part of a bigger conspiracy. Kale, could I trouble you to send a message to the Core of Thirty? Tell them to keep an eye out for Sino and Cyrus. Traveler, Paimon, you two come with me. We'll go after Sino. Sounds like a plan. Let's go. Cyrus has been living in the city lately. He rented a place near the field so we can keep an eye on his tomato plants. Then let's go look for him there! Here we are. This is the place. Huh, we might be too late! Looks like nobody's home! Oh, Sino moves fast. If he was here, he's probably long gone by now. I know that voice. Is that Tainari I hear? Ah! Professor Zahahadi! Wow, so it really is you. My goodness, whatever is going on tonight? We're looking for Sino. So, he's already been here. Yes, not long ago, in fact. He knocked on my door and asked if I'd seen Cyrus today at all. I told him the old fool left early this morning, and I hadn't heard him come back. So we went to his place, and would you believe it? He's gone. Goodness knows where to. It must have alarmed Sino, because he took off in an awful hurry after that. He never did explain what this was all about. <sighs> How serious is it? Well, if Cyrus isn't at home... Oh, it sure doesn't sound good. Professor, did you hear that a student recently tried to extort Cyrus? Why, yes. When I left the house that day, I noticed he was watering his flowers in the field in complete silence. He had a piece of paper clutched in his hand, and he looked lost in thought. I could tell something was troubling him, but he wouldn't tell me what it was. If Sino hadn't happened to visit him that day, he'd probably still be holding on to that thing. After seeing the letter, Sino told him to contact the Corps of Thirty, but Cyrus was very reluctant. He claimed it would only damage his reputation. Eventually, he relented after much persuasion from Sino. Huh? Cyrus didn't want to report it? Well, that's strange. When we saw him, he seemed pretty okay with the idea of the kid getting his just desserts. As a former sage, it's possible Cyrus still has enemies at the Academia. That's why Sino was so insistent that he report the matter to the authorities. I was there while they were going back and forth over it. So Cyrus initially hoped to stop this from going public. But why? Oh dear, what on earth has that old fool gotten himself wrapped up in? Oh, I do hope he's not in danger. Oh, I almost forgot. Sino left me this letter to pass on to you. He wrote it when he came by earlier. He realized you might come looking for him. Thank you. What does it say? Let Paimon take a look! <laughs> My 
My friends, this is a rather complicated state of affair. Unfortunately, I cannot disclose more than that. I ask you to understand and accept that I had to act alone at this stage. Don't come after me. <sighs> yep, that sounds like Sino. Thank you, Professor. Please do not worry. We will do all we can to protect both Sino and Cyrus. Traveler, Paimon, let's head to the Academia and regroup. You're here? I thought you were going after... Ah, I guess you lost their trail. We went to Cyrus's house. No one was there. Sino got there before us, but he was long gone by the time we arrived. He didn't say where he was going? No. He left us a letter and told us not to go after him. Can't say I'm surprised. <sighs> Typical Sino. Anyway, some updates on progress on our end. I drew the emblem from memory again, but in more detail this time. I checked some ancient texts for a similar design. The one I found was a little blurry, but the similarities in the general form and certain details were clear enough to confirm a match. Yeah, and we're lucky we found anything at all. It turns out the emblem was all but lost to history. We scoured the entire Academia collection, and that book was the only one with a record of the motif. Meanwhile, Arav managed to get Uraka to disclose his source. The one who told him about Cyrus's embezzled funds was a young man from the desert. According to Araka, he had a striking presence and was well-educated. Apparently, the two met in the tavern over a game of cards. The guy claimed to be in the city for business as part of a merchant caravan. Uraka was intrigued when he heard what his new acquaintance had to say and brought up the idea of extorting Cyrus for Mora. The guy encouraged him to go ahead with it, then handed him some pen and paper to write the letter. I see. So it could be that this person planted the paper intentionally. So, how do we find this guy? Did Uraka say where he is? He doesn't know. He claims not to have seen him since that day in the tavern. The man gave him some tips on how to carry out the extortion, but from then on, Uraka was acting alone. Nephis and Arov have gone to meet the Corps of Thirty and review the city's entry and exit records. Also, Nephis admitted that the Temple of Silence in the Academia is just a facade. The true Temple of Silence once came to the Rainforest to establish a collaboration with the Academia. But, as time went by, the Sages gradually became corrupt and foolish. The Temple of Silence felt that they could no longer trust the Academia and ended the partnership. They retreated back to the desert about 400 years ago. Ever since its inception, the Temple of Silence has been the guardians of King Deshret's civilization and belief system. They traveled throughout Sumeru, sequestering and guarding any wisdom that posed a threat to the people's livelihoods. At its roots, it was a legitimate and reputable organization whose purpose was to guide people towards the right path. The Academia of the day knew that the split would damage their reputation if it became a matter of public knowledge. And so, they set up a dummy organization of their own to conceal the truth. Not only that, but they managed to keep up the charade for hundreds of years! So how did Cyrus become acquainted with the true Temple of Silence if they left centuries ago? I'll bet that's the question that bothered Sino. Probably why he went after him in such a rush. Whoever is behind this, getting Uraka to extort Cyrus was only the first step of the plan. Their true goal in doing so was for Cyrus to see the emblem on the letter. He must have recognized it right away. That'll be why he didn't want to involve the authorities. He probably hoped to take care of the whole thing by himself. Unfortunately for him, Sino had other plans. Since the desert is where the Temple of Silence originated, that is in all likelihood where Cyrus went. I have to go after him. Really? Are you sure that's a good idea, with how you respond to the heat? Why don't we send someone else? I should be fine, as long as I bring plenty of water. Besides, I just can't shake this ominous feeling that if we don't catch up to them soon... <sighs> Everyone, I have news from the Corps of Thirty. Master! 
Oh, so that's Nafis, Tainari's master? Oh, we're finally getting to meet him in person! It's a pleasure to meet you, Traveler and Paimon. Several independent eyewitnesses have reported seeing Cyrus and Mahamatra Sino leaving the city at different times. Both were heading in the direction of Caravan Rebot. I was going to suggest that you join forces with the Corps of Thirty in this case, however, as I'm sure you've already heard from Al Haytham and Kaveh, the Temple of Silence is involved. The Academia has made a number of decisions throughout history that I am ashamed to talk about. It may well be that no better choice was available to them, but those actions are nonetheless a stain on our legacy. I won't attempt to make you understand the Academia's perspective. Now is the time for action. I understand where you're coming from, Master. But I'm afraid the situation might be more complicated than we thought. I think we need to keep a low profile, or at risk making things worse. Good point. If Cyrus is involved with the other side, or worse, if he's fallen into their hands, and... <sighs> Everyone, we have to get Cyrus and Sino back safely. We cannot afford to lose them. Need our help? Whatever you need, we got you covered. Really? Wonderful. You have my most sincere gratitude. Arav and I will continue to follow up on the lead from Uraka. Kave, Scribe Alhatham, I'd like to ask you to cover the duties of the House of Dana. Tainari, you are planning to go into the desert, correct? I am. Kave, I'll be okay. You stay behind to help Master and Alhatham. Well, if you're sure, okay. But be careful. Thank you all. Arav, let's go. You'd better get moving. Don't forget to ask for help when you need it. Will do. Let's go, Tainari. Hopefully we can catch up with Sino before it's too late. Knowing him, he's probably covered a fair distance already. But we still have a shot. Let's take it. <laughs> 